Hi, and welcome to our fourth in the series here on Introduction to Audio. Today we're going to talk about mixers and how you can use an uh, audio mixer to bring together all the different sounds to create that final output that goes to the speakers and creates the sound that hopefully that you want to hear. And in looking at mixers, there's a lot of technical things that we'll need to go through and cover, but also there's some really practical things that you'll want to make sure that you've got a good grasp on. In fact, one of them is kind of a pet peeve of mine. I've seen this very often, and that is the fact of just a sound engineer paying attention, watching what's going on, keeping their eyes on the stage. You know, time and time and time again, I've seen people walk up to the microphone, grab the microphone, start to talk, only to have it turn on seconds, sometimes it feels like minutes, after the person starts talking. And really what's gone on there is the sound engineer kind of has his head buried in the mixer, not paying attention to, you know, what's going on. You know, personally, that's a huge, huge pet peeve. You know, Jeff, I don't know what you think about that, mm -hmm. but... Jeff? Oh, sorry. <sighs> Case in point, uh, thank you for illustrating that point uh, ever so clearly. But that really is, in my book, inexcusable. You really need to keep your eyes on what's going on and make sure that you get the microphones turned on before the person starts talking. Now, Jeff, thanks for being with us and, oh, and waking up. We appreciate certainly. that. Uh, hopefully you can guide us through here a little bit, some of the uh, technical things on the mixer. But before we start, I do have a question for you. Do you know what every one of those knobs Every does? one of them. Every one. Except maybe that one. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, but they're, they're, yeah, every one of them. Are you feeling as confident as I am? Seriously, Jeff, you've mixed on mixing boards that have ranged from the $1,000 variety here up to the almost $100,000 variety and about everything in between there. And there is definitely a lot of commonality in yep. those mixing boards. And that's what we want to talk about today. It's not the mixer or the style of mixer that's important. It's understanding how the mixer works and what it does. And that's what we're going to walk through today is those steps of how we get our inputs, mix them together, and hopefully get that desired output that you're looking for. So Jeff, with that, kick us off kind of on a rundown of uh, a mixing board. We've got lots of channels here and okay. stuff, so <clears throat> kind, okay. of, kind of give us your philosophy. When we look at a mixer, and most uh, modern mixers today, they all have the same basic elements to them. They uh, all have uh, an input stage of some sort. We call it an input stage. They all have uh, additional outputs to send it to you know, different places to stage monitors and various things. They all have an equalizer section so that we can contour how the sound sounds, equalizer being the bass and the treble. Um, and they all have uh, some assignment features. And then last but not least, uh, the volume control for, the, uh, for, for mainly what, you, what you're mixing and what you're hearing. Um, and then they all have uh, various things, a, a master volume control of some sort. So basically, no matter if you're mixing on a small mixer or a very large mixer, they all have these basic sections to them. So mixers are all, uh, they're real similar to each other, even big, from big to little. You know, when I look at it, I commonly think of, you know, your, inputs, your input section there or your gain section, mm -hmm. followed by your auxiliary section, which, you know, I always refer to that as send it where you want it, send the sound out into the lobby, send it to a you know, mm -hmm. recording deck, send it to a monitor mix, it's kind of one of those you know, additional output things. And then obviously the uh, equalizer section and then that bottom you know, routing section. And the easiest way for me to kind of understand this, and Jeff I think you can guide us through that, is understand first that every one of the channels are exactly the same. For, so the, for the most part. For the most I'm, part, right, there's sometimes a little difference, but for the most part they're the same. And once you learn one, it really mm -hmm. principles obviously apply you know across that and I like to go kind of from the top down method. top so to the bottom go right for it if we think of this as a water pipeline this top button here what we think of is sets the, the water pressure in our water pipeline if we uh, turn this button up and, and we, hit, we set the too much sound going into our channel or too much water pressure what's going to happen is a couple things uh, when we come to our faucet down here and we turn our faucet open just a tiny little bit it's going to splash water all over the place because there's too much pressure in the pipes. Mm -hmm. Same with the sound. It's going to be too loud by just barely moving the volume control open. So we want to adjust this back so that we've got enough, uh, good pressure in the pipeline. Also, if we have this water pressure too hot in the pipeline here, 
we're going to overload our circuits. We're going to saturate the, the circuitry. So you're going to blow a pipe? You're going to burst a pipe. So that's, uh, that's the first thing we want to do is we want to set the, uh, the gain on top of the channel um, so that we can turn the volume control or open up the faucet and have uh, good water pressure, you can do what we need to do with it, and uh, not just have it trickling out. Now, the reason we have this knob up top here is that usually everything we plug into the mixer is a little bit different. Different microphones are, have different loudnesses or sensitivities to them. Different singers. Different singers. People have talking. Different, people have different levels. So turning this knob allows us to uh, take all these different sources and equalize it and make them more of an equal volume going into this channel. Um, so that's, that's what this gain button does. Also, we have things like keyboards and tape decks and CD players that are plugged into the wall, and so they don't, don't need as much boosting or to uh, get them equal to some of the microphones and things you plug into it. So that's what our, tr our gain button, or also known as a trim button, mm -hmm. sets our water pressure in this pipeline all the way up and down. Yep. Now let's stay there for just a minute and let's look at setting up a typical channel. If you had a soloist that you did not know that came in, what process would you go through to set the initial gain? Well, uh, if, if, if I didn't, wasn't familiar with anything, if the microphone was working or not, um, I'd have her walk up to it and start singing so mm -hmm. that I got some kind of a signal going into it. Um, and what I do then is I adjust this, this gain button here uh, to where I've uh, started seeing some signal light here. Mm -hmm. So once I got some signal light, then I can uh, open up this, this volume control a little bit. And I'm going to want to adjust that, so I've got the volume control down here, in a, up in the um, upper third, up, upper one third part of, the, of, the, of its movement. You know, it's convenient how almost all mixers have marked that spot. That's exactly you. why they've marked that spot. That's the ideal spot to, to use this volume control. Um, Anything below what we call uh, zero or unity on this fader, anything below that, it's actually kind of cutting the sound back a little bit. Anything above that, it's boosting the sound. So anything that's right around zero, it's going to be the cleanest sound uh, going through that volume control. And it's also going to give you the smoothest fader the smoothest, movement, the smoothest like movement. you mentioned about overpressurizing the pipes mm -hmm. and so forth. Now if we look at these, the, the numbers that are printed around this volume knob, Gary, mm -hmm. um, it's got zero up here in the upper third uh, portion of it. And if you go about a quarter inch up and a quarter inch down, those numbers only vary by about five. So mm -hmm. it goes zero, minus five, or plus five, and that's a whole yeah. half inch of travel. Now as we keep going along, as we get towards the bottom of the fader here, that quarter inch travel is ten. And towards the bottom, that quarter, same quarter inch is dropping that level thirty, you know, thirty or more mm -hmm. um, decibels, relative decibels. Um, yep. And uh, so that's why movement up here in this part of the fader is a lot more gradual, a lot smoother. So you can mm -hmm. make little adjustments and the sound doesn't jump around near as much on you. So when you have a, a vocalist singing or somebody speaking, you can, it's a nice, smooth, unnoticeable change. Right. So since that's a nonlinear fader, you need to make sure that you set it up appropriately mm -hmm. to, to use it the best because you really don't want to be making... 30 dB that, fluctuations on you know little movements that you're making on the on the fader. That's exactly. If we had too much water pressure in our pipe, and we were using this volume control down here and lower, just those tiny little movements would make huge jumps in the sound. So that's exactly why we need to use the trim up here, so that we can use the volume control in this upper area and make things as smooth as possible. That actually makes sense. Mm-hmm. So now that we've got.